Hello everyone, I hope you're doing fine. So uh, from this video, we're going to see about deflection. So before we go into all the MCQ questions, I thought it is better to explain all the formulas that are associated with deflection, the various support conditions, etc. So in this video, we'll be seeing just the introduction and all the formulas associated. So let's get started. And before we start, I would really appreciate it if you could smash that like button, drop me a comment and share this free program with anyone who might need it. So the first type of beam we are going to see is a cantilever beam. So cantilever beam means it will have a free end. Uh, this is a free end. This is the fixed end. And we are going to see the formula for slope and deflection not have any slope at the fixed end at the fixed end slope will be equal to zero but at the free end we'll have slope so the formula for the free uh, free end slope is equal to say i have a load happening here a load point load of p is happening then my slope at this point is equal to p l square by 2 e i and my delta is equal to p l cube by 3 e i next if a cantilever beam is subjected to UDL, say of intensity W per meter, then theta is equal to WL cube divided by 6EI, whereas delta is equal to WL power 4 divided by 8EI. Next, say I have a cantilever beam and it is subjected to moment. Yeah, then my theta will be equal to simply ML by EI. My deflection will be equal to ml square by 2 ea so you have to keep in mind all these formulas they are very important like you can also derive them but keeping them in mind uh, by heart will give you an upper hand in all the competitive exams you can save so much time the next type of uh, beam we're going to see is a simply supported beam so simply supported so at the both the ends we will have slope so slope deflection say it is subjected to a point load p so how will the deflection be it will be like this so we will have slope both this is in clockwise this is in anti-clockwise so the theta will be present at both theta if this is a and this is b it will be present at both the sides we'll have both theta a and theta b they'll be same in magnitude but the direction will be different will be equal to theta b i'm going to write only the magnitude here it will be equal to the load is p so it will be equal to p l square divided by 16 ei whereas deflection we already know it is pretty simple it is p l cube divided by 48 ei next we have a udl of intensity w now also you'll have uh, both theta a and theta b so i'm going to write only the magnitude here w l cube divided by so it is 16 here it is 24 ei and next deflection is phi w l power 4 by 384 ei this is also very much used and next uh, let us go for fixed end beams so fixed ends at the both ends we'll have fixed so we will not have any slope so the slope column for fixed end beams is zero but we will have deflection deflection for say a point load is p l cube divided by 192 ei whereas if i take a fixed end beam with udl i'll not have any slope my deflection will be equal to w if this intensity is w w l power 4 divided by 384 ei this is your formula now coming to certain uh, special cases say let me take a cantilever and it is subjected to udl here uh, to a length of say l by 2 then what is my uh, theta and what is my delta? So I'm going to find this, say this is A, B, C. I'm going to find what is my theta at P. So theta B will be equal to, uh, if my uh, UDL has been spread throughout the length, then what will be my theta at the end? It will be equal to, if this is W, then it is W L cube divided by 6 Ea. This would have been the formula. Now it is spread to a length of L by 2. So I am going to just substitute L by 2 to this L. On doing so, I will get that my theta will be equal to W uh, L by 2 to whole cube divided by 6 Ea. You can do the math. You can find what is theta B. 
now coming to uh, deflection so we have udl only till this point the deflection will be something like this that means if at b also you will have a deflection at c also you will have a value so first let me find what is delta for this point so similarly if the udl had been throughout the length then what will be my delta it will be equal to w l power 4 divided by 8 ei right so now i am going to just substitute the value of l this value is i need to find what is deflection at this point so this value is l by 2 so if i am going to substitute l by 2 this to this point my deflection will be equal to w l power 4 divided by 1 28 ei so if you substitute this l for l by 2 you will get the answer now this is deflection at this point at b if you have to find what is your deflection at c then we have a formula so deflection at c is equal to let me take another color so we need to find what is deflection at c right so we already know this part this is deflection of b we just need to find what is this part so this is equal to theta b into the distance present here so if the whole distance is l this will be equal to l by 2 it can be anything this can be a this can be b the thing is you have to multiply by this distance distance between b and c into here it is l by 2 so i just have to uh, in order to find what is my delta c that is my deflection at the uh, free end i just have to multiply my formula is just delta at b plus theta b into l by 2 so what is my delta at b this is my delta at b i have already found it is w l power 4 divided by 128 ei plus theta b we have just seen it is w l uh, divided by 8648 ei into l by 2 so on doing so we will get that uh, delta c is equal to 7 w l power 4 divided by 384 ea so you can just keep this in mind but remember this formula it is very important because even if they have given any other thing say this is l by 3 and this is 2 l by 3 even for that cases if you know this formula you will be able to answer them so this formula is very important as far as deflection is concerned next is uh, a different type of cantilever beam say this is my cantilever beam and it is subjected to a point load at this point so similarly uh, just like our udl deflection uh, the slope and deflection are the same yeah, as before so if it had been towards the end then what is my deflection it would have been uh, pl if this is p then this would have been pl square divided by 2a now this l square it has to be replaced by l by 2 that's it on doing so you will get theta is equal to uh, pl square by 4 into 2 is 8 ei uh, deflection will become uh, similarly you will have deflection at this point also at this point also now i am going to write what is the deflection at i am going to write just the maximum deflection that is deflection at this point it will be equal to pl square divided by 5 pl square divided by 48 ea this is delta c now if you need uh, delta b then you know what is the formula of if it had been towards the end then the deflection is pl cube divided by uh, 3 ei now you just have to substitute uh, l by 2 here so this will become pl cube divided by 8 3s are 24 ei so your deflection at b is equal to pl cube divided by 24 ei so you can uh, cross check this formula also delta c would have been equal to delta b divided by uh, del um, theta b into l by 2 right so this on substituting you will get pl cube divided by 24 ei plus theta b we have just found out it is pl square divided by 8 ei into l by 2 so on doing so it is pl cube plus 40 24 ei plus pl cube divided by 16 ei so the common uh, if you take lcm then this would become 48 ei so 24 into 2 is 48 16 into 3 is 48 so it is a plus sign so 2 plus 3 it is 5 pl cube divided by 48 ei which uh, I'm sorry this is this has to be cube i'm really sorry this has to be cube so this is the formula for deflection so this way you can find a deflection for any given number of distances it can be l by 3 anything 
So the next thing we have to keep in uh, here is moments associated with simply supported beam. So this is my simply supported beam. I have two moments. They are opposite in direction. Both have the same magnitude m. Now what is my slope? What is my uh, deflection? So coming as far as slope is concerned, it will be the same on both the sides because it is symmetrical. So the slope here is going to be simply ml divided by 2 ei. Deflection is going to be ml square divided by 80 x. So, um, deflection is maximum deflection. Now uh, comes the tricky part. If it had been subjected to only one side m, uh, say this is a, this is b, then we will have two different types of slopes. We will have theta b, I mean theta a, we will also have theta b. So you have to keep in mind m is applied at b point. So at b only slope will be maximum. At a, when compared to b, it will be minimum. So at A, it is going to be ML divided by 6 EI, whereas at B, it is going to be ML divided by 3 EI. So uh, based, the intensity is M, so I have put M. If it had been 3M, 4M, then it will be 4M divided by 6 EI, 4M divided by 3 EI. So this is your formula for slope, whereas uh, as far as deflection is concerned, here you have two moments. So it is ML square by 8 EI. Here you have only one moment. So uh, the deflection will be this divided by 2 since there is only one moment. So it is ml square divided by 8 EI divided by 2 which is equal to ml square divided by 16 EI. So uh, the next special type of beam that we are going to see is a cantilever beam subjected to moment. So this is also simple. Um, as far as moment is concerned, it can, if it is placed here or here anywhere, the theta is going to be the same. Theta is equal to ML divided by EI. Simply that. Uh, deflection is equal to here. Deflection will change. Deflection based on this value. Say this is A and the whole length is L. Then what will be my deflection? You can get it from this formula. It is M into A divided by 2 EI into 2L minus A. So from this formula you can get deflection also. So the uh, things you have to keep in mind is all the formula for various types of beam conditions. And the other important formula is for a cantilever beam, if this is C and this is B, in order to find delta C, you have to keep this formula in mind, which is nothing but delta B plus theta B into the length associated. It can be anything, this length. Okay, so this formula you have to keep in mind. So with this we come to all the things that you have to know, all the formulas that you have to know as far as deflection is concerned. But we'll look into the conjugate beam method also in the upcoming videos uh, where we'll use that to find the slope and deflection. So thank you so much for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.